Hey, what's up, everybody? We are in our Pray First series. We're back again, and we've been covering it for the past seven to eight weeks, and it's been a really just great time. Many people have shared uh, just kind of their heart behind prayer. Digging uh, deep. And it's been awesome, I think, for us. I've really learned a lot and encouraged my own individual prayer life. And so I hope the same thing has happened for you. Uh, But Pray First, the heart behind Pray First is that uh, we want to be people who don't pray a reaction, but That's in right. everything that we do, we pray first. Right. That we react out of uh, out of praying first versus a reactionary prayer. There's nothing wrong with being reactionary praying, but right. uh, praying because hey, we just want the heart of God. And before something happens, we've already prayed about it, yeah. and the Lord's already moving on our yeah. behalf. That's good. Um, I kind of go back to uh, the disciples and when Jesus was teaching them, kind of thinking about praying first. And he was saying, uh, when he was casting out the demon boy uh, who was possessed, uh, saying, hey, this kind of only comes out by prayer and fasting. Yeah, that's right. And uh, living a lifestyle of fasting, living a lifestyle of prayer. Jesus right. was saying to them that, hey, you got to live a lifestyle of fasting in order to move yeah. in this power. Yeah. So, no, uh, that's, that's so good because I think what, oftentimes when we come to prayer too, we, we are more reactionary in the sense of like, yeah. oh, this happened to me, I need to pray about it. But what I love about even just going through the Lord's Prayer is learning about how we should pray and taking those steps. Uh, just the other day I was going through it and I started underlining like just the, the first word of the Lord's Prayer uh, topics that we went through is connect, worship, pray, depend, forgive, engage, express faith. I think just taking those concepts of the Lord's Prayer and walking through those daily is just such a game changer. And it's been such a crucial model for, you know, I mean, Jesus gave it to us to learn how to pray. So it was super important. But uh, I'm excited about this next portion that we're going to go through. Uh, We kind of close the door on the Lord's Prayer and we have this other topic of how to pray or different ways to pray. And as we talked about, it's not, it's not a command. It's not like, hey, you have to pray this way. Um, But it's a way that you can express yourself and how to approach God in prayer. Uh, uh, talking about the tabernacle prayer. Yep, so tabernacle prayer uh, is really uh, set up, and the Lord had specifications on how to build a tabernacle, yeah. which I think is really important to remember that, hey, when we come before the Lord, to be organized in our prayer. Yeah. So that's part of the, why we're going through uh, this whole thing with a model, that we are organized in our prayer. Yeah. So the tabernacle, thanksgiving, yeah. uh, praise and worship, and we're covering the outer court uh, today as the first one. And there's yeah. seven different stations and the one today is the outer court. So yeah. uh, thanksgiving, prayer, uh, thankful praise, setting the tone to really come before the Lord with uh, praise and worship. Yeah, it says in Psalms 104, it says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. I think like God's really setting us up here and said, hey, before you even approach me, before you come to me, he asks that we would do so with thanksgiving and praise, that we would approach him with hearts of of thankfulness of what he's doing in our lives. And I think that's so crucial um, because oftentimes, like I said, we come reactionary. We come in the sense of, of, oh, Lord, I need this in my life or or, this just happened and, man, I really want to pray for this. But he's saying when you enter into my presence, when you enter into uh, uh, the tab, Tabernacle and the tabernacle was a, a reference of a dwelling place of God, right? It was yep. the tabernacle, uh, then the temple, and then Jesus. But the tabernacle was that initial place of the presence of God where they, he was at. And so when it says, when you enter into the courts, these outer courts, he's saying, do so with thanksgiving, do so with a joyful heart, do so with thankfulness of who he is, who he is in your life. And man, if you want to see God move in your life, be thankful for what he's already done in your life. Be remembrance of what he's already done in your life. Um, I go back to the Israelites all the time. I feel like I've told this often, but I'm always reminded of like them being taken out of Egypt and, and being in the wilderness for 40 years and complaining the whole way. Like, the and, and I'm just like, what are you doing? Like, you've seen miracle after miracle, yep. and then you were you were rescued from slavery, yeah. and now you're still and complaining. they're complaining. They're and not. You see manna in the morning. There was never a season of thankfulness yeah. of Lord, thank you for this. And it's like, no wonder you spent 40 years in the wilderness. Like, you totally right. lost sight of right. what God was already doing. So. Yep. Man, such an importance to, to have that thankful heart first as you approach his, his courts. Yeah, and it really just sets up a attitude, a position uh, for you just to really hear from the Lord. Yeah. And that's what worship does. Worship, uh, I've kind of always said that worship, praise, thanksgiving, it leads to really the presence of God. 
And when we are in the presence of God, we're able to hear him more clearly yeah. and allows the Holy Spirit that's within inside of us to really be uh, more aware. We're more aware of it. We're, it's almost like it's activated within our hearts, within right. our spirit. We're able to pray uh, with power and with authority and uh, really just be able to seek the Lord. I think it also just exposes things. We'll kind of look at next week yeah. about um, coming and repenting. Yeah, the different wanna, elements that were in the yeah, courts. And I don't really want to go too much into yeah. that because we'll cover that <laughs> next week. But really worship exposes things in our lives that we're really kind of dealing with. It's true. And it's important for us to be really real with ourselves say, hey, I'm really struggling with this, Lord, and I come before you with thanksgiving, and now, Lord, what are you doing in my heart? Yeah. And it's allowing the Lord just to really open your heart up so you can receive what he's saying, what yeah. he's doing in your life, and what really you're doing wrong in your own right. life. <laughs> um, and it's just a really a beautiful uh, position to, to have, that yeah. thankful praise. It is, it is. And it's just, it has to always, like I said, it always has to be the forefront of our thoughts as we approach God. And this has helped me in my own prayer life because, like I said, we oftentimes would come to God with those requests. But man, every time you pray, every time you worship, like the first thing that God tells you to do is enter it with that thanksgiving. Uh, and it's such a simple concept, but one that we often miss and that we forget about. And I think the reason that God pushes us to be thankful is it, it recalls what he's doing in our life. It recalls those blessings that he yep. has already given us, that those ways that he's moved in our life. And so uh, a great way to do this is, man, journal it. Journal your prayer requests. Journal the blessings God has given you. Remember those things as you go through your day. And then so you can bring thanksgiving and praise to his name as you see him. As he answers a prayer request, you can go back to two years ago when you wrote it down and see that prayer request and go, Lord, thank yeah. you for that. Man, yep. Thank you for that. And then just, I just, man, there's so many times God moves in our lives that we forget to thank him for it. And so yep. I think it's We crucial. lose sight so easily. So easy. Like you're saying with, yeah. with uh, the Israelites moving out of Egypt. Right. Lose sight of what God's done so easily. Yeah. And so like if you do what you're saying, write down what the Lord has said, what he's done in your life, yeah. and remind yourself, man, it just it lifts your spirit. Yeah. And it just, I, I just, I did this one thing in my notes. I just recalled this as we're talking about it. There's a, it's in, a, I forget the scripture right at the moment, but I think it's, it's the generations after Joshua that a generation grew up to never know the Lord mm. simply because they never shared the blessings of God with those that were behind them, those that were coming wow. up, those next generations. Yeah. And so, man, just to, to be reminded and to be thankful what God's doing in your life, not only is it encouraging and building you up, it's preparing your heart to approach Him right, but yeah. you're sharing that with other people as well. You're sharing those blessings that God, that God's still on the move, that God's still doing something today. Yep. And you're building up people's faith through that. Um, and that, that brings up another point. I think in faith, as we pray and as we pray for thankfulness, to, to have faith in your prayer, to, to pray uh, with a heart of faith, to be thankful for something that he hasn't done already, but knowing in your heart that he can do it. Yeah. Right? I mean, I think you have a great story, and I don't mean to put you on the spot because we didn't really uh, talk yeah. about it, but yeah. I, I vividly recall, and you just shared this this past week, I think, and I remember when your sister was given uh, with, with the tumor and everything, yep. uh, I vividly remember you telling me the story of of how they begin to begin to praise and thank God for what He was already done, even if He didn't do it, well, they begin to thank previously, Him. Previously, like, right. yeah, it's they, part of a. They said, "Lord, no matter what happens, position. we thank you for it." Yeah, and yeah. that was a heart position, a faith yep. issue. Yep. Um, that just it's a it's a game changer uh, yep. when you approach it in that light. Yep. Just uh, yeah, understanding and looking at what the Lord. Uh, is going to do and already thanking him for it yeah. positions your heart and positions your faith to really receive uh, the Lord's blessing and what right. he wants to do and kind of activate that. Right, because that's yeah. faith. I mean, it's, it's agreeing yep. that, Lord, that you're going to do this, yep. and, this and I'm it. already thankful for Boom. it. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to approach you with a thankful heart for it that you're going to move in such a way. Yep. Um, so, man, it's just a, such a reminder as as we get into this the prayer of the tabernacle of recognizing how we're to approach his mm -hmm. presence, to, to have that right heart and that right mindset. Yep. And if you haven't heard that story um, about my sister, don't really have enough time to really share yeah. it well right now. I shared it two weeks ago uh, in church in my message. So yeah. I encourage you to go back and, and take a look at that story. It really is a powerful story of how there was a tumor there. The Lord made it vanish, like removed it, Insane. and just positioned. Or yeah. we, we positioned ourselves as a family just to really uh, agree in faith that the Lord was really going to do it. And uh, I don't understand everything all the time, but... Man, just to see the faithfulness of God in that situation, uh, a reminder of that. If I remind myself of that, when I go before the Lord in prayer, 
game changer in my prayer life. Yeah, it's a yep. faith increaser. It's a, yep. it's a, it's a recognizing who God is, the characteristics of God, and yep. man, just be thankful for those things. So, uh, just as you're watching this, as you're going through, I want you to right now just begin to just think of those things that you're thankful for in your life, those blessings that God has done for you, those times that He's moved. Jot those down somewhere. Remember those things, even the small things. God is faithful every day in your life, and we need to begin to have thankful hearts and approach those on a day-to-day basis of, God, you are so good for blessing me with my job. In a time where a lot of people are losing their jobs and being laid off, I mean, let's not take for granted these small blessings that we we may perceive as smaller every day, but really they are blessings from God that we need to approach Him with thankfulness for of what He's doing in our lives. It's just the reminder of, hey, God's the same today as He was yesterday. And what He did yesterday, what He did a year ago, what He did two years ago, five, ten, 20 years ago, whatever it might be, yeah. he's the same God who moved in that in that situation, same God who moved in the Bible, the same God who healed the sick, yep. can now do it today in your life, and will. reminding yourself of that, and coming before the Lord in prayer, of just thank, thanking God, and positioning yourself to, just to receive from the Lord, and to hear his voice in prayer. I think it's just so important for us to be able to hear his voice in prayer. It starts off with worship, it starts off with thanking him, yeah. uh, to really be able to hear what he's saying and speaking, because how can we really pray his will uh, if we haven't really, if we're not in that attitude of worship right. and in His presence, and right. that's what worship does, it's what thank, thankfulness praise does. It puts right. us into His presence. Right. Once you begin to thankfulness, you, you just you're in the praise mode already. You the begin presence to, yeah. changes everything. Yeah, yeah. You start to everything. thank. You begin to praise. It's yep. just you just you're thankful for what He's doing. You begin to praise His name of who He is. So, uh, man, it's gonna be good so stuff. good. It's the, this tabernacle as we go into these other sections are just gonna be deep. Yep. Um, the the Israelites were very symbolic of things and in the way they represented things. So. Uh, there will probably take on new meaning to you as you learn about things of like the brazen altar uh, and these different areas that they walk through the tabernacle uh, of how it can apply to your life today. So, yeah. And the Lord excited. really honors uh, organization. Yeah. And so these are ways of us organizing our prayer life. Yeah. So I encourage you to take what we're learning here with the Lord's Prayer, with His Tabernacle Prayer, yeah. and organize your prayer life and watch the Lord really move in your life yeah. and move in your prayer life and move in your own individual time yeah. uh, because of your organization. God honors right. excellence. He does. I mean, if you if you want to see that God loves excellence and God loves a plan, go read about the Tabernacle. Like He told yep. them by detail everything that needed to be in it. When He built the Tabernacle, right. by detail everything Don't that needed to be in it. Don't go off one cubit, bro. Yeah, when He's telling Moses, <laughs> yeah. like, God is a God of excellence. He's a God of preparedness. And God shows up to a prepared place. So find yep. that plan in your life. Find a prepared time. Find a find a moment that you can just be excellent in approaching Him. Set those appointments with Him daily that you can approach Him in right standing. Time, place, and model. Yeah. So with so that, good. we'll uh, we'll pray. Let's pray out. Yep. So yep. Jesus, uh, we're just uh, coming before you right now, thankful God yes. for who you are. Knowing God that you are the same God today as you were yesterday, Thank you. and you will be forever, Jesus. That uh, God, in moments where uh, we doubt uh, what is happening in our realm of influence, God in our in our lives, Jesus, I pray that God that you would uh, we would remind ourselves, God, of who you are and what you've done and begin to thank you, begin to praise you, and also begin to praise you, God, for what you even haven't done yet, but you will do. And so, Lord, we come before you in faith, knowing, God, that you are in control of all things, Jesus, knowing that, God, that you are moving and that, God, you are guiding us in the midst of all this chaos, Lord. Uh, Lord, you are there for your people and you're protecting us. And so, Lord, we uh, come before you today and just say, God, we love you and we thank you, God. We worship you worship you. We praise you. And may God, as we uh, begin to live lives of thankfulness, may your presence just meet us. And may we encounter your presence like we've never encountered it before, Jesus. And that, Lord, this would be a time for your church to rise up because, God, we know that we're not battling his flesh and blood against principalities and powers of darkness. So, God, may these things that we're going over in these uh, Pray First series, God, may it lead to a transforming prayer life and a transforming uh, just... uh, uh, mindset in our lives, Jesus. And so, Lord, we give you the praise, we give you the glory, we give you the honor today in Jesus' name. Jesus amen. Name. Amen. Amen. Hey, guys, thanks so much for joining us again for another week. Can't wait to tune in next week with you guys as we learn about the brazen altar. The brazen altar. It's so, be join good. us next week. It's going to be good. Love you guys.